let's mm. let's get into the big topic here because I know this is the one that most people want to talk about here. And let us all know in the comments section what you guys think on this. If we're, if, if we're right, we're wrong, we're crazy, whatever. Let's talk about Daniel Jones. Because that was the big topic going into this. Will Daniel Jones play better? Will Daniel Jones get benched? Will Daniel Jones you know, continue to be the starting quarterback? I got to say it's a mixed bag for me, man. It really yeah. is. Like, I look at the, this. Okay, 16 yards. I'm uh, sorry, 16 uh, uh, um, completions, 28 attempts. 178 yards and two touchdowns. And I, I guess mean, the time of possession was an issue. Like the Giants didn't have the ball very much. Let me be very frank and say that up front. And I'm not sitting there and saying Jones had a bad game. But are those the numbers that we're okay with? I was say, he did against the Commanders? Against the Commanders, guys. Yeah. This is the same team that gave up. Four touchdowns to Baker Mayfield last week. Like this is not a great secondary. Plus, Forbes was out, so one of their starting corners was out. You know, Quan, one of their starting safeties, was injured as well. Like this was a banged up, crappy defense, and we couldn't get it going, guys. Like this, this there should have been. Like there, there should have been something in this game here. We got things a little going a little better there. And the only time he looked good and comfortable was when he was throwing the ball to Malik Neighbors. Let's be honest with that. Yeah, it was the Malik Neighbors day, if you will. Yeah, yeah. and we'll get into Malik Neighbors in a little bit there because that was definitely a coming out party for him. But, you know, there was no throwing the ball around. There was no – and I, I didn't see any – like if anybody wants to throw up a specific play, feel free to call me out if they think I'm wrong in this. I didn't see him going through progressions once in that game. I kind of felt like he was like, this is where I'm going, and that's where I went. Mm. There was no scanning the field. It was like, like, that's what it was every single time. You can't play quarterback that way. No, A good it's... defense would have, would, have, would have fixed that. Being a deer in headlights, like you literally look at each target every single time. You can't do that. Yeah, it's just, it, it's absolutely insane. It's absolutely insane. Like I said, he played better. I'm not putting this loss on him. Let me be very clear on that. I'm not putting this loss on him in any way, shape, or form. This this loss to me goes on the defense and on the front office for not having a kicker. But Daniel Jones has to play better against a team that is. Quite frankly, one of the worst defenses and one of the worst secondaries in this league. Because if he doesn't, we got the Browns next week, guys. We got the Cowboys the weeks after that. And I know the Browns, you know, got spanked by the Cowboys week one. The, the Cowboys just got spanked this week by the Saints here. But they're better, you know, bet, they have better corners. Point blank than the Commanders do. And I'm a little worried when I see that. A guy not guarding through his progression, just going for it. I'm a little worried what's going to happen going forward. I, I I think this was a better game than for Jones in that first week, obviously. But was it a great week? It's, no, wrong, it wrong? wasn't crazy. No, not at all. So I mean, yeah, DJ looked terrible week one. We all saw that. Like he looked like a guy that just came back off an ACL surgery and wasn't moving properly. You can also say the same thing today. He played a lot better, but. Was he a stud? No. I guess he managed the game better than what he he's been doing, but I want to say he looked great. Like Blake Neighbors, like how many yards did he have on the day? He had 127. Out of 100 and what 60 186 yards that DJ had? Yeah. So like and neighbors had quite a few yak yards. So, like, DJ was doing what he was doing. He just got bailed out by neighbors for a lot of, of this, you know, of this game. And I'm not saying it's, you know, a crutch or, you know, pros or cons, but like, that's what you have in neighbors. Like, you, you get, you give the guy the ball at the line of scrimmage, but that's also what DJ does, it just gives the ball at the line of scrimmage and yeah. expects big plays to be made all the time. And it's not going to happen. And, Week one and eight, but this week, young know, neighbors excelled. 
Yeah, and and without him, what would a Jones look like? That's what I'm saying. And that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm I'm with you. Like, like again, I'm I'm glad to see improvement from Jones. Don't get me wrong. Like again, we've said this so many times in this program, and I feel like there's a lot of Jones people that are like get upset when anybody mm-hmm. talks anything negative or realistic about him. We want Daniel Jones to succeed. He is the New York Giants quarterback. First and foremost, we care about that more than us being right about him. That's what we want. We want a good Giants team, and we need him playing well to do that. I'm sorry, but this is not playing well. And it's not playing horrible. It's not playing bad. But when you look average against a bad secondary, that's not making me confident in you going forward still. Like yeah. I was looking for a 225, 250 yard kind of outing at that point. You know, uh, I was looking for him going through, trying to go through progressions. You know, I, I was looking for that kind of stuff, and I just, I just don't have it. And I'll say this: the offensive line looked very good again today. Like the offensive line gave him time; he had a pocket. Like there's no excuse yeah. as far as that part of it. There, I think he only got sacked one time on the game. I can look it up to verify, but I think it's only one sack. Yeah, one sack by Cleland Farrell, that's my thought. So, yeah. I mean, again, it's obviously hurries and rushes and that kind of stuff that go into it. I don't have all the stat, those stats in front of me yet because the game just ended. But I saw pockets. I saw time. I saw him having a chance to do what he had to do. You know, it's not to say he was never under duress, but no quarterback's ever never under duress. Yeah, that offensive it's, it's line is good. And it's not very often I get to say that. You know, it's been two games in a row. It feels weird. Like, really? Yeah, right. So fine looks good. But well, I think it's they could say something like that. <laughs> seriously. But when you have a guy that's really focusing on his first read and not moving off of him, there's only so much you can do. You know, and I felt like neighbors kind of became a security blanket for him, where he was just like, Let me just chuck it to neighbors. Let me just chuck it to neighbors. I mean, how many times did he chuck it downfield to neighbors when neighbors wasn't even open? Uh at least three times. Yeah, like I don't know if he, he had the one or where he threw or something, the, or he threw the one ball like seven or eight yards past neighbors. Yeah, in stride. Like, that's what I kind of felt like he was expecting penalties in some of those. I don't, I don't know what kind of penalties he was hoping for. Yeah, um, but that's what I kind of felt like in that whole thing. But like I said, I'm not going to sit there and bash Jones for this game. But I'm not going to get here and say this this was exciting or maybe I was wrong or maybe this is the start of better things for him. I would love for it to be. But I don't think that's realistic. I really just don't we're going based on what we're watching here, you know? So if you like that clip, then you will love the full episodes too. Find us on your favorite podcast app and look for us on all your favorite social media platforms. Thanks so much. Please, I'm, I'm begging you. Please. 